What is up, my friends? Welcome back after what has been a very confusing, strange, eventful day. You know, I don't know how I feel right now. I don't know how I feel after the Arsenal result. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I can't, for the life of me, figure out how I'm feeling right now. But I'd like to know how you guys are feeling. It's um, It's been a mad day, hasn't it, folks? Honestly, like, from the lows of the performance earlier on to the confusion about the Arsenal result, I'm, I'm genuinely... Yeah, I'm confused. I'm confused. This is more so than ever why I wanted to come on and chat with everyone because I don't know what way I should be looking at this. Should I be looking at it that we've messed up a huge opportunity that we could be sitting top of the Premier League now again with it in our own hands or has the door been left a little bit open for us to pop back in I really don't know I know I'm angry about the result I know I'm angry about our performance I know I'm confused as to what the hell happened but that Arsenal result is um it's interesting if nothing else uh Adriano said the race is not over and you know what I feel like we need a poll to start this off to ask is it still on is it possible okay so I'm going to throw a poll into the chat early doors and we'll leave it running in the background for a little while I just want to ask everyone is it still possible can we still win that league? And look, I'm a realist. I know Manchester City are by far the favourites. Manchester City are, it's in their hands. Their fixtures are kinder. They've got a muscle memory of being able to win these games. And they're on a, an incredible run as it is. I get it. I totally understand it. I don't for one second believe anything other than City are in the box seat right now. Of course. You know, if you're looking for the stats for it... um. Opta stats have changed. They reckon Manchester City now have a 70% chance to win the Premier League. Arsenal down to 18% chance and Liverpool down to a 12% chance. So look, the odds are very much in Arsenal's favour. But we're certainly in a better position than we were at half past four or ten past four, sorry, when that game finished. But then again, look, do I look at it and think to myself... Is it possible that Liverpool can actually go and win six games on the trot in the league? I don't know what's realistic anymore. Um, but it certainly hasn't done us any harm that Arsenal lost that game earlier on. Loads to unpack today. And um, again, I thank you all for coming back with us. It's been a difficult day today. And the uh, last couple of hours has been one I've been reading, trying to figure out what's gone wrong. Um. Still in it, but we don't deserve it. See, Michael, I think that's that's kind of realistic, mate. I feel like that's probably the right answer. Somehow, we're still in the title race. Yes, we are now majorly not the favourites. It's definitely Manchester City's to lose at this point. But, uh, yeah, it, I think that's right. We don't deserve to be in a title race, but amazingly, we are still in a title race. Um, City won't drop it now, said so Jacob. Well, I went and got the fixtures. To have a look at what's remaining for everybody concerned. And by the way, please do drop a like on the stream and hit that subscribe button if you're new. Uh, great to have you with us. And truly, I mean it. To see nearly 2,000 of you join us live tonight. I don't know um, I don't know what I've done to deserve you all, but thank you. Um, right now, it looks like this. Manchester City's remaining fixtures are bright and away. Nottingham Forest away. So back-to-back -back away games there for Manchester City. Obviously sandwiched in and around the game they have against Real Madrid in the Champions League. Then they've got Wolves at home, Fulham away, Tottenham away and West Ham at home. I mean, look, I know it's wishful thinking, but you never know. Uh, for us, we've got Fulham away next week. Then we've got Everton away, West Ham away, Tottenham at home, Villa away and Wolves at home. Lots of away games there for us and it won't be easy. Um, I'd start Gakpo left wing, Jota striker, Diaz right wing, uh, try Dom right wing. Said Harry and thank you Harry, first super chat of the night, appreciate you mate. Craig, have faith in Klopp, he won't disappoint. You know what though mate, it's really hard to have faith in anything after that performance. I'm... 
I'm still shocked. I, I don't understand. Look, I can understand how we can drop points. Don't get me wrong. Like, I understand. We dropped points at United. We had the result against Atalanta. But I just can't understand that response today. The lack of urgency. The lack of aggressiveness, probably, is a word that I would like to use. Yes, aggressiveness. Uh, City got a drop, and I hope they will. Um, maybe Spurs will look, possibly. And what could make this interesting as well, of course, is that Spurs will have a part to play in this title race. Spurs have to play us. Spurs have to play Arsenal. Spurs have to play City. Um, and City going to Spurs Stadium hasn't been a happy hunting ground for them. So I guess anything is possible. Uh, good evening, said Nicola. Nothing is lost. We're Liverpool. We're Liverpool. That makes a whole lot of difference. They need us. I love the positivity and I'm so glad I've come back on for the positivity because it's hard to find positive things at this moment in time. Um, I want to just say as well, congratulations to Leverkusen. I'm sure you guys are aware they've beaten uh, their opponents by five goals to nil today and uh, they've won. That's how you go and win a league title, by the way. Five nil and they've won it. Uh Sorry, today is not about hoping. Arsenal and us simply don't deserve it, said Gakul. As much as you hate City, you have to admit there's a ruthless in them that makes them winners. Yes, I, I I can't argue with that, mate. If I take apart the emotional situation with City and, you know, how they play and uh, how they've assembled their team, yes, they are uh, an absolute machine for grinding out wins. They are. Uh, and you, I think you're right as well, Gakul, in what you said, and uh, we probably don't. But I felt like we've deserved other stuff and it hasn't happened. So I don't know. If It gives me one bit of confidence though. There may be twists and turns to go somewhere. I don't know if they're going to twist in our favour or not. But I did not think Arsenal were going to lose to Aston Villa. I thought that maybe Villa could get a draw there. But they're wobbling. They're under pressure. They feel it as well. So if there is any positives to be taken from that, it's... Well, I guess just that. That Arsenal are wobbling. Uh, Palace fan here. To be honest, I would have quite liked Liverpool to win the league. But you aren't clinical in the run-in. You won't win anything. Look, let me first of all say to you, mate, congratulations. Uh, thoroughly deserved win today. You created plenty of chances. You know, only for Robertson's clearance off the line. You could have been out of sight there before half-time. Um, so yeah, congratulations on your win, mate, first and foremost. And thank you for your kind comment. I don't disagree with you. You know, we've been very wasteful, which is really unlike us. Because if there's one thing we can say that we've spoken about over the years, it's how good our front three have been, whatever combination that has been. And ability to score goals hasn't really been a problem for us. It's it's the defensive side that's been our Achilles heel in years gone by. To see it... Uh, to see us drawing a blank today in front of goal, even, you know, one point could have made a big difference at this rate. It's just, um, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one to take. Probably the hardest post-match content I think I've ever had to make because it's been a, a week that, let's be honest, like, we haven't had to suffer many of. You know, this is our first back-to-back -back defeats at Anfield since 2017. That's, we've not, you know, had to suffer these type of results too much. Um, two of our Losses in the last week. It really just hurts. Barcelona 2.0 coming next Thursday. So I'm deluded as you know. Um, and I don't make no bones about what I am. Absolutely deluded. But I don't know why. And I've no right to say this. But I do have belief that something might happen on Thursday. I don't know why. I, I don't know. Maybe I am deluded. But I... I think there's more chance of turning it around Thursday than we do with this league title. 1-0 uh, on Thursday, 3-0 do you think we'll sell players? Um, yes, of course we'll sell players, mate. Yeah, I don't know who as of yet, but... Uh, Craig, still very good at how many shots we had watched the highlights about 20 times and couldn't believe my eyes. So... I keep watching back that Salah chance that was cleared by the defender with a block. And I, I watch, the more I watch it, the more I keep thinking there's something wrong that he, surely that was a goal. I can't, my brain won't compute that that wasn't a goal. The biggest mistake you can make is leave even the smallest chance for Liverpool, said Tom Cruise lover. <sighs> 
I don't know. You know, do we have any right to believe that we can win six games in a row now? Because, let's be honest, we've had a week where we drew at United, lost 3-0 to Atlanta, and we're beaten 1-0 by a very average Crystal Palace team. It's hard to feel optimistic that we're going to win six on the trot. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it was incredibly difficult watching Jurgen Klopp's post-match interview because you could see... um, Sorry. Excuse me. You could see Jurgen was dejected. You could just see it in him after the the match. I felt for him. I really, really felt for him after that. Um, yeah, he looked lost, confused, not angry as much, but very confused. Uh, you made me love Liverpool even more. Mate, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Look, I know I'm an emotional dude and I know that during these watch alongs and stuff, you know, I let stuff out, but I pretty much feel like I stand over a lot of what I said after the game. I'm concerned about leadership because I didn't see any out there on the pitch. I liked Andy Robertson's interview after the game. I thought he was honest, forthright, laid it all out there. Um, I I don't know if you've seen this, but there was a a clip, a camera angle of Virgil van Dijk saying, um, wow, did you see that? He couldn't believe it after the game. You just see him pulling his his jersey up to his mouth. It drops down and he just melts, wow. A shock, camera panning around Anfield. You see Coppite, young and old, just shocked. Just unsure. Like, that's not in the script. Uh, You're a good man and a true red. Always keep it real. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Uh, How do you guys feel? about the players that are at the team now. What would you do with Verge and Salah? Because these are the two big discussion points I think we're going to have to tackle. I'd have a grown-up, honest conversation about it. Virgil van Dijk and Mohamed Salah are two of the most consistent leaders in our dressing room. But... Part of me feels like it's time for a change. Uh, which is more difficult to say about Van Dijk, by the way. Because with Salah, like I've said, we've always had the ability to score goals. You know, I'm old enough to remember your Michael Owens, your uh, John Barnes, your Robbie Fowlers, your Luis Suarez, your Fernando Torres. We've always scored goals, but we've lacked that spine defensively since I've been an adult. We've had good centre-backs in Sammy Hippia, Jamie Carragher, Daniel Agger. But Verge was a difference maker. I feel comfortable saying this. I take the armband off him. Keep him on the team. I do think he has a lot to give. But I know people don't like when I say take the armband off him. But listen to his own words. There's a quote from Virgil van Dijk when he was interviewed during a difficult time for the Netherlands. Where he was coming under a lot of criticism. And he said that being the captain of the national team and a senior player at Liverpool, it was difficult. It was taking its toll on him. I really don't know if he enjoys being the captain. Before we get into should he be the captain or not, I don't know if it's a role that he feels comfortable in. It never seems that way. I know people can lead in different ways. Some people are talkers. Some people lead by their actions. Verd's just, I feel like he's better doing his own thing. Just leave him to defend. Um, So for me, I would take the captain's armband off Verge next season if a new manager comes in. And I have no problem if he gets an extension. None. But I do think we need a new captain because for various reasons, I don't think it's a good fit that he's the captain. Salah, I stand off what I've said for the last three months. I think now is the time to sell. Uh, for the good of the team and for the good of the business side of things. And again, I think I want to have a conversation where we can talk about this sincerely. 
nobody's trying to say Salah hasn't been amazing. Nobody's trying to say Salah doesn't deserve a statue built after he leaves. But all things come to a natural conclusion. And just like the manager today at halftime wasn't able to stir an emotion enough in those players. Maybe they've heard the words too many times. Maybe there was no well for them to go back to. And that's why I talk about change and freshening it up. Sometimes you need fresh opinions, fresh leadership. And that that's where I'm at with it. Uh I will always hate the Manx more than City fans. We sell Salah, who would you get to replace? I don't think we need a replacement. Uh, because I don't know if we're going to play with wide players. So, necessarily, number 10 is probably more obvious. I mean, look at Florian Verts today. Hat-trick for Leverkusen to go and win the league. Sometimes, players lose their hunger. And it's natural, because you get soft. You get soft with the trappings of wealth. You get soft with the adulation. That natural hunger isn't there. The best comparison I can probably give you is a fighter. And I think Conor McGregor is a good example of this. When Conor McGregor had nothing, when Conor McGregor was piss poor on the dole, he had that hunger in his eye. And you see it a lot in South American players or African players that come into the Premier League. They want to change their lives. They want to change their families' futures. They want to change their trajectory. And they've got that steely desire to win and that mentality. And sometimes that goes away over time. And I feel like it's going away a little bit with some of the players that have been brilliant for us. Like, really superheroes. Uh, We all know VVD will stay as captain and I'm happy with that. That's absolutely fine, Harry. I respect your opinion. I think he's a terrible captain. Uh, I just... I do. I don't think he's he's captain material. I think he's a great defender, a great centre-back. But I just don't see him as a captain. Uh, the future of EVD and Salah may depend on our new manager and his ideas of the way forward. Well, the reason that we're speaking about those two and not really Trent is... You know... Trent has the age part on his side with regards to a negotiation for a new deal and he's a local. Salah and Van Dijk, you're talking about lads both 32 at the end of the campaign, both with one year to go on their contracts. Um, And I truly feel it's a difficult decision as to what to do with those two boys because I wouldn't be comfortable with either of them getting a, a pay rise. I don't think they've earned it. They've not gotten better, in my opinion, over the years. Well, sorry, Salah's peaked. Um, So yeah, I don't feel like either of them deserves a new deal. Who would you make our new captain? McAllister, probably. Uh, We have to stay positive, even though it's hard after the last two games. Congratulations to Xabi Alonso and Leverkusen for securing their league titles at Nut the Nerd. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Uh, We should talk about Kanade as well. Yes, can we? Yes, I think we do need to talk about Kanade. I think that's a very good point because what on earth has happened to him? He looks like all confidence has been drained from him. You know, he was always a centre-back that I thought was a little bit too touch-tight at times, but incredible recovery pace, incredible mentality, uh, incredible physicality. But, yeah, I don't know. Today... And I've also, to be fair to Canada, I've also felt at times he's been asked to do a lot because of the way Trent had operated on the right-hand side, drifting in field, and Bradley as well. I think he's been asked to cover quite a, quite a large area. But uh, he looked shaky again today. And as Jürgen even admitted this himself, the marking for their goal was its just laughable. It was so poor. Is the Discord down? Uh, no, it's not down. It's just closed off, mate. Uh, but Alex, I, re- I recognise your name, mate. So I'll get email me, Alex. Email me. I'll get that sorted for you. Why are you talking about a new captain? Uh, look, to be fair, AJ, this isn't in relation today alone. I've been talking about Verge as a captain for a few weeks. I don't see him as a leader. He's a great centre back, and I've no problem with him being in that team, none whatsoever. I just don't see him leading, though. I just don't. I don't see it. You know, 
I don't see him barking instructions. I don't see him in the referee's face. I just don't see leadership from him. Um, yeah, so I would. I would change the captain. But I never really felt comfortable with him getting the role anyway. You know, he wouldn't have been my first or second choice for it. But it doesn't mean he's not a great centre-back. I, I look at these two conversations differently. Uh, Imran said, Sorry, Craig, do you think the players are fatigued after a long season? Today, Eze and Elise were fresh from injury. You can say that, but I guess, Imran, I could say to you, Jota's fresh from injury, Trent's fresh from injury. So if you're looking at it from a fatigue perspective, we have look at our bench today. Let's look back at this again and look at our bench from earlier on. You know, there's no excuses for us to talk about fatigue when we've got Gomez, Sobosly, Gakpo, Elliot, Jota, Gravenberg, Trent and Kwanzaa on the bench. There were plenty of options there for Jürgen to um, to call upon. So I don't feel like fatigue is fatigue is the answer. I don't know. Again, I, I'm not in that dressing room, so this is just one man's opinion. League City, stop being delusional. Yeah, uh, okay, mate. Thanks for that fantastic contribution. Uh, one positive, Gakpo is starting to play well as a winger. I think he could have played in Jones' position. Uh, Lewis, Robbo and Cody on that side could have been interesting because we were doing well. Yeah, I agree with you on Cody Gakpo. I think he definitely deserves a, a start against Atalanta. Um, I was confused to see Jurgen take off Lucho today. I thought Lucho was one of our better performers. Um, and I, I don't understand how Salah stayed on the pitch. Uh, I would have said the same, by the way, if it was Darwin that stayed on the pitch. I'd be sitting here saying I don't know how Darwin stayed on the pitch. I thought both of them should have been substituted. I thought Klopp made some substitutions too late. Just looking at Sky Sports as well. Uh, the pundits on there were even talking about how late Elliot's substitution was and how it should have been done earlier. And it it was, again, just looking for miracles late on when there was more time to make that change and impact the game. Uh, what is your predicted team for Atlanta? Said Hunter. Oh, God. Um, Allison. Trent. Kwanzaa, Virgil, Robertson. Mm. Endo, McAllister, Elliot. Um, Diaz, I'd play on the right wing. Jota in the middle and Gakpo on the left. That's probably what I'd do. But that's not the team I think will take to the pitch. I think the team we'll see is um, Gomez maybe at right back, Allison in goal, Van Dyke and Canada as the centre backs, probably Robbo at left back. Um, almost certain he'll go Endo McAllister Jones and then Salah, Jota, Diaz. That would be my guess at Jurgen's team. I think we should try play Salah at striker instead of right wing. Theo, I agree. And this isn't a, a reactionary thing. I've been talking about putting Mohamed Salah through the centre for a year. Um, I maybe a little change from... Look, today what I noticed about Salah was whenever he received the ball, he has too much work to do to get into the penalty area. The amount of times he receives the ball and he almost has to play a 1-2, then go past the player... He was operating in too wide a position. And I think Jürgen alluded to that when he was talking about the starting position of some of our players today. We were too wide. We know that Pep Linders and Jürgen Klopp love the players to attack the half spaces. So I was quite surprised at how wide Mohamed Salah was at times where I felt like he had to work hard to get into an area to cause some damage. So moving him central to me would be, yeah, a decent option. Uh, is the title over for us? I cried after today's game, said Ashburn. Ash, I don't think you're on your own, mate. It's shedding a few tears. I haven't quite got there myself, but uh, I don't know how to feel, mate. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if the title's over. I don't know if we're deluding ourselves because Arsenal lost, but all I know is if we had have beaten Crystal Palace today, we'd be top of the Premier League right now and talking about the title being fully in our own hands. 
So I don't know if it's a curse, a curse or a blessing. What happened today? Uh, I was up with my hands in the air when Jones went through," said David Smith. Yeah, to not even hit the target there, Dave felt uh, felt wasteful from Curtis, and you could see it in himself and his reaction. Um, it's not for the weak being an LFC fan. My blood pressure is always high. I swear I'm borderline diabetic because of Liverpool. But man, I really love Liverpool," said Alex Alvarado. It's a uh, it's been a very, very, very strange couple of weeks, you know. Because it's unusual for us. This isn't something we've become accustomed to as Liverpool fans. Back-to-back home defeats. You know, that's not what we've got used to under Jurgen Klopp. Which makes it all the more concerning. Like, I don't have any proof of what I'm about to say. I don't. Nothing. Not even an inkling. But I feel like something's happening behind the scenes that we're not aware of. Or maybe I'm just looking for that reason to explain what we're seeing because it feels like we were dented in the Man United game the FA Cup and we've not been able to shake that off I know United fans love to say that they've derailed our league but we've done it ourselves and now it's time to just try and get that confidence back Uh, Brian thank you mate with a very very generous super chat Brian said I got nothing yeah that's uh, it's kind of where I'm at as well Brian I got very little in the way of positivity, but I mean, still there. Two points. I don't know. We'll find out in the documentary. Yes, it's a very good point, Adam. We may do. City might draw points because they've hard away games coming up, like Spurs and Brighton. Yes. Potentially, and God Almighty, if they drop points to Brighton, I hope we capitalise. Um, how do we feel about Thursday? How do you guys feel? Do you think there's a chance we can do this on Thursday? I mean, Connor said to me on the phone earlier on, it'd be the most Liverpool thing in the world to go and turn it around somehow on Thursday out of nowhere. Um, but I, I don't know. We're not worse off than we were at, at 10 past four. I feel confident, confident enough to say that. You know, did not see that Arsenal loss coming. I mean, you could see those Arsenal fans just looked shell-shocked when those two late goals went in. Lalana to the rescue, said Kerry. Oh, that would be great, Kerry, yeah. It'd be great if he could come and help us. Uh, City won't drop points. We've been here before. I know, Rachel. You're probably right, mate. And you're right, we have been there before. I get yeah you you're right Rachel but I, I'm so I'm honestly just heartbroken. Did anybody see how angry Darwin was coming off the pitch? Some tension with the high five exchange with Jada subbing. Um, what the heck? I'm concerned. I'm more concerned about the fact that dude can't put the ball in the back of the net, if I'm being honest. Um, I have I've no qualms about him being substituted whatsoever. I feel like... Uh, I feel like we should have made more changes earlier. Lord of mercy on us, Craig. If VVD, Ibu, Salah and Darwin all play on Thursday, drop them. I think we can turn it round. Salah and Nunes deserve to be dropped, said Woods Ethan, 776. Uh, Klopp has been the same since that United defeat in the FA Cup, said Secret Guy. Um, I think we've got to go for it on Thursday if we want to win silverware. That's where I'm at, Stargirl. That's where I'm at. Like, weirdly, I think there's a better chance of us winning the Europa League than the league. And that sounds crazy. Because there's six league games to go and we're two points off the top. But, I don't know. Am I deluded for thinking it's possible on Thursday? I know as fans we've got to have some belief, right? But we have beaten them 5 0 away from home previously. Robertson should be the captain, said Roy. Um again, he was one of my two choices originally. I think uh, right now Robertson, yes, I'd have no problem with him being the captain. I think McAllister's a good shout though for the future. Klopp overthinking it too much. The quality the players had, like Mo and VVD. 
Liverpoolian said, Hey Craig, what should Liverpool's main priority be in the summer transfer window? At least two centre-backs. And that's not reactionary to today. I've been saying that for a while. But you know what What the last two weeks have made me realise? And I wasn't like, I wasn't in this mood beforehand, but I do think we need to go in for a DM. And I don't say that as a knock to Endo. And I don't say that as a knock to Bajcetic. I say that as knowing that we've just lost an entire season pretty much with Stefan Bajcetic's development. And it's going to take him a while. So I think we need to go out there and spend money on a defensive midfielder. Proper money on a real top, top defensive midfielder. Um, I think Endo's done very well for us this season. I'm certainly pleased he's at the club and I think he has a role to play as well going forward. But I do think you can never have too much competition for certain places. And I feel like defensive midfielder now in the last couple of weeks has made me just feel just go get somebody to put the pressure on and to give increased competition. Am I shocked that Arsenal lost? Oh, mate, 100% shocked. Honestly, would have bet my life. Because I said to you, after our game, you know, when Arsenal players were arriving at the Emirates, they looked confident. They looked in good spirits. They looked ready to go. And um, to see... Look, I'm not surprised that Aston Villa can go there and get a result. Because Unai Emery is a master tactician. And, you know, Villa have the tools to cause anybody a problem on their day. But I, I did think Arsenal would get the job done. I did. Um, is it hard to watch commentate on a game when you can't ha- hear the regular Sky commentary? Also, we need 100% to cash in on Salah, not sure on VVD. Um, no, I don't find it hard to comment on a game when the commentary isn't on. But i tell you what was incredibly hard. Rick James. Um, feeling helpless and having 10,000, no, actually 13,000 people in the chat of various mindsets, some of them laughing at us, some of them heartbroken, some of them angry, some of them frustrated. I'm not lying when I say that was the hardest match reaction I've ever had to do because I kept just saying, keep it together, Craig, keep it together. Don't lose your shit. People need to vent. Keep it together. It was tough. It was tough, but I'm proud. I'm proud of getting through it. Um, it's just mind-boggling at the minute. My mind is just all over the place. Uh, is the league still possible? We've had nearly 5,000 votes on this already. My God, the numbers tonight are incredible. Thank you. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, folks, please do. Um, yeah, 55% of people feel like it's still possible. I'm going to end that when it gets to 5,000 votes because I think that's a good um, sample size. Laser Sharp, how are you, sir? Good to see you in. Said, hey, Craig, very disappointed today. Man City's to lose now, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. So I'm just going to read your comments out for the next while, guys, because I feel like we need to give you guys a chance to vent as well. Uh, Arsenal losing gave me renewed hope, said War Tank. Uh, Arsenal looked arrogant, said James LFC86. Dan should start over Darwin on Thursday. He's just more clinical, said Virgil CC. Any polls or ideas that you guys would like me to put into the chat, anything you'd like your uh, other fans' opinions on, please do let me know and we'll do our best to to make that poll possible for you because, you know, I love to gauge opinions in general and it's a lot easier to do via poll. So I'm going to end that poll now anyway. And we've had just shy of 5,000 votes and 55% of you guys still feel like it's possible. Uh, do you think we win the league now, Craig, said London West? Do I think we win it? No. No. But I don't think we deserve to think we win it. I think all that we can do now as a football team and as a set of fans is just go one game at a time. Don't get ahead of ourselves. Just one game at a time and see how we get on. Um, today does give us a bit of hope with that Arsenal situation. It certainly doesn't make it any worse for us. But again... I can't argue with anybody when you look up at the league table, you see City there now and you think now they've got their noses in front, it is going to be difficult for them. But I just hope that they have that moment, they have that dip, they have that frustration in front of goal or something that gives us a sniff. Uh, Do you think we should go for it and put four strikers on and three defenders on Thursday? We should just go for it. Mm, It's a tough one to figure out what's the best thing to do. 
Because what you don't want to do is concede. So my goal, if I was Jurgen, would be to get to half time one up. Get in a half time if you're one ahead. Two two goals in the second half is absolutely possible. But just like when we were facing Barcelona at home, it is important that you get that first goal. It is important that you look solid defensively and build from there. You can create the moments of chaos as the game goes on, but you can't concede early. You have to get that first goal. Uh, who's favourites for the Europa League? Bayer Leverkusen, probably. Um, at this moment, I would say, with the form they're in, with the confidence that they'd have, they have the league sewn up now. I know that they still have that unbeaten record to keep going, but if they wanted to, they could rest players whenever they want now because the league's in the bag. Do a poll on who should be our next captain. I think we should start by asking the other question first. Should we change captain? I feel like that's... Because if the answer to that is no, then we have our answer, right? So let's start with that poll. So that pulls up. I want to just say this though. I am able to say I don't want Virgil to be captain and still say I think Virgil is a really, really good centre-back because I do, both of them. I don't like him being Liverpool captain, but I do think he still has a lot to offer the team in, as a defence, uh, excuse me, as a centre-back in our defence. Absolutely. I just don't feel he's a leader. I don't want that to be a slight against Virgil. I just want him to concentrate on what he does best, which is defending. Because remember, also with a captain of a club like Liverpool, United, Chelsea, whoever, a lot of duties come along with that. A lot of distractions come along with that. A lot of your time gets taken up with charity stuff, with interviews. um, And sometimes as players get a little bit older, maybe they just want a bit more time with the family, a bit less, you know, a bit less uh, stress. And Virgil has the national team captaincy. So, yeah, let's see there. At what point does it become a farmer's league? Do you want the honest answer to that question, Jack? If Manchester City don't get punished, that's the point to me at which it becomes a farmer's league because they ain't going to get any weaker from this point, you know. They're at the abil- they have the ability now to justify the spending because they've built the club to a level where they are winning European Cups. They are getting a lot of television revenue. They are attracting more sponsorship. So where they're at now, I don't see them falling too far backwards unless something dramatic happens with the charges. It's what got them to this point that I think needs to be looked at. But if they're found or not really punished, found guilt or innocent or not punished, then it's a farmer's league. Uh, Joe Angus said, My team for Atlanta, Mrozek, Mabea, Scanlon, Bajcecic, Nalo, McConnell, Clark, Muzilevsky, Dans, Gordon, Kumas. I, I, that's a team that gets beaten uh, over in Atlanta, probably comfortably as well, I would imagine. But respect your opinion. Thank you. Uh, Baron Rain said, How do you feel, Craig, now? Much better known Arsenal losing. I'm still angry because I'm, in one sense, yes, our chances have probably improved since uh, we finished our game but there's another part of my brain that sits here thinking uh, we could be top of the league now if we beat Palace which let's be honest we should have done and I don't, well, sorry when I say we should have done I mean we should be expecting to do not that we deserve to win um, we would have been sitting in our top of the league fully in our own hands and uh, six games away from, from winning it so yeah there's mixed emotions definitely Jones gives me nightmares, said Peace Bilton, or Peace Bitten. Uh, Diaz Dribble Merchant, I've seen that, Zane, a lot. Um, I don't agree with you on the zero ability. Um, today, I thought he was the one of the front three that looked like he was trying to make something happen. I think he was really unlucky not to be on the score seat. Dean Henderson made an incredible save in the first half from Diaz, so... Uh, I would disagree with you on that. Do I think sometimes he makes the wrong decisions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Craig, I would change formation on Thursday. Said Stargirl, go 4-4-2 with Salah, Jota in the front. Midfield, Diaz, uh, Maka, Elliot and Gakpo. Let me just process that team for a second, my friend. One sec.
I wouldn't be against the change. What we don't want to do is go there and do exactly what Atalanta think we're going to do. Play exactly the same way. Um, I'd be interested to see if he puts Trent in the starting eleven because when Trent came on today, brilliant to have him back, but he looked like he'd been out for a while. He didn't look... And look, that's expected. He, you know, he wasn't... I didn't expect him to come in and be like he'd never left. He did look a little bit um, off the pace, a little bit like his... His aim wasn't quite in yet. Watkins is the missing piece of the puzzle. Replace Nunes with him. He's all around really good. You're not the first person I've seen suggest that, actually, over the last uh, while. Um, Ollie Watkins is having a very, very good season and showing that he is able to do it at the very top level. Uh, Alex Macklin, thank you for the super sticker, mate. Ooh, I genuinely wasn't expecting this answer to the poll so far, but it is still open and I'm going to leave it there for you guys to have your say. We asked, should we change captain? And so far, 55% of you guys think, yes, Liverpool should change captain. Uh, Frederick said, Alisson, Trent, Kwanzaa, Van Dijk, Robertson, Endo, Maka, Elliot, Gakpo, Dia, Jota. Uh, again, just processing that in my head, mate. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I think that's a team I'd put out as well. Mate, I do. Alexander Isak is a good finisher as well. He is, yes. He's certainly uh, certainly proven himself as the season has gone on, Isak. Um, and Newcastle will probably have to sell one of their big stars to fund more signings for them. So, I mean, I wouldn't say no to Isak. I wouldn't say no to Watkins either. Do I think City will win the league? Probably. You know, Opta have them at 70%. Um, Arsenal at 18%. Liverpool at 12 So the Opta supercomputer is certainly showing uh, City as m massive favourites. Again, to everyone that has joined us, thank you for being in. I mean, I did not expect 3,000 people in the chat at... Uh, after the day we've had so thank you for coming in and do drop a like on the stream and please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so again shout out to our sponsors today manscaped would i take verts of course yeah yeah florian verts is amazing um hat trick today as well for leverkusen and a five nil victory actually i want to just slightly off topic but something that caught my eye did you see what happened with nabi Keda? so as you know verda bremen were going to play today against leverkusen and yesterday, Naby Keita found out that he wasn't going to be in the starting eleven, and he refused to even travel. He got in his car and drove home. I'm so glad we got rid of that lad, because he is an absolute diva. Imagine, one, not being good enough to get into that Werder Bremen team, but then uh, jumping in his car and going home. That's embarrassing stuff. Get a Dingra and Watkins, said pa uh, Paolo Atan Cardenas. Uh, dodge the bullet at the Facebook network. Well, I, I wish we did dodge the bullet, but we didn't. We had to uh, We had to look at him robbing a living for his entire time at Liverpool. Watkins can go missing in games like Haaland. I think he works harder, though. I don't think he's ever going to be as prolific as Haaland but I think Watkins will, will do more in a game for you um, I think he's a, a better work rate uh, Donna said I was at the game it was so frustrating that we didn't take our chances so Donna if I may ask my friend what was the atmosphere like inside was there belief that it could be turned around because I just kept seeing shell shocked Liverpool fans in the stadium do you think we should sell Nunes? Said Katie. So. It depends on the offer. Because I think. We're not going to get the money we paid for him now. I think. The options to sell him would be limited. So we'd probably take quite a loss. If an offer came in. And it worked for everybody. Would I sell him? I don't know. I, I I don't know if I'm banging my head against a brick wall here. Because 
you see those few glimpses of what's capable with Darwin, but there's no consistency there yet. And we're we're long enough into his Liverpool career now that we should hopefully see a bit more of that. Oh, probably not. I probably wouldn't sell him yet. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't sell him yet. There was another one I wanted to get to though. Where was the next question? There was another one I wanted to get to. Someone was asking about Curtis Jones. Where was that one gone? Uh, a lot of people frustrated with Curtis Jones, and um, I get it. I understand the frustration because we know what Jones' level can be. But you know, Jurgen singled him out for praise today, saying he was probably the only one counter pressing correctly in the game. I just felt he was wasteful uh, in possession. Took too long on the ball. I just I can't believe Elliot didn't get on earlier. Uh, I wouldn't sell Darwin for a hundred million. He's a superstar in the making. That's what I was humming and hawing about. All the tools are there. You can see what he's capable of. I don't know if it's something psychological with Darwin. If he needs to sit down with a sports psychologist, or I don't know what it is. You know, nobody's going to doubt the man's talent. You know, he has it all there. But there's only uh, so many times we can keep saying that when we see chance after chance after chance missed. Get off Nunes back. What service does he get from the team? That that that's that's a serious post, is it? Like, uh, no problem with you saying get off Nunes back. By the way, no problem with that. But to ask what service he gets from the team, I think that's a little bit burying your head in the sand. Plenty of service. Plenty of opportunities to score. So I think you're being a little bit unfair to the rest of the team there. The Darwin's lack of um, numbers in front of the goal is down to Darwin. But, again, not trying to write the kid off or anything. Just felt like that was a little bit of a... An overly biased in favour of Darwin comment. But again, that's not necessarily a bad thing either, is it? That you're saying that. I like that you're I like that you're getting behind our players. Don't get me wrong. Where's Ben Doak? He's coming back from injury, Damien. He's coming back. I think we should see him soon enough. Uh do you think if we get 150 million for Salah this summer? I don't think we get that much from. And I would accept less. I think a hundred million is is a number I do business at. Uh, nothing again. Reacting to today, similar stance I've had for a while. I'm starting to feel we drop points against Everton. I, I, it's hard to look at anything now. Like if I sat here and said to you now, we're beating Atlanta three nil. We're going to win in penalties, and we're going to win the le- next six games of the season. That would be delusional from me because nothing in our recent history suggests that's going to happen. So that's why I said at the very start, I think right now we just need to take this one game at a time and see, not, try not to get ahead of ourselves and see what each game brings us. I've never bought into this philosophy of going over to Atlanta and just putting out a second team on Thursday. I think that's nonsense. I'm not saying we've a chance to win it, but I'm saying you've got to try. Uh, I reckon we'll only get about 80 million for Salas and Mark Bell. Um, maybe, Mark. Maybe. Would you take that, though, bud? You know, would you take the 80 million? That's uh, that's what I'd, I'd ask you there. Would you take that if it was on the table? Uh, no one's talking about Gakpo. Was he good today? I think he did well when he came on. I think Cody Gakpo certainly trending in the right direction in recent weeks with his... Uh, cameo performances from the bench probably deserving of a start on Thursday over in Italy read coach Bill's comment very interesting yeah let me scroll back up to find Bill's comment one second Uh, Mr. H and friends nice to see you in again my friend thank you for your support right there's coach Bill Craig I read somewhere that Sobosly felt short when he realised that Klopp will be leaving. Could it be a reason why he's underperforming 
so as to get sold when Klopp leaves. So, I've got to be honest with you, Coach Bill. If I was in a player's position who was brought into the football club by Jurgen Klopp to play for Jurgen Klopp, I would feel pretty shortchanged that he's leaving. So, I don't know if that is the case with Dominic Soboslai. And I'm not excusing his performances because of that. But I can understand somebody feeling like they were bait and switched with that scenario. Uh, Look, ultimately, Soboslai is a professional. His performances are down to him. But I do have some sympathy with players who were maybe sold a vision of two, three years with Jurgen before his contract is up only to find out three or four months in that he's departing. I get, I, I would get that annoyance, yes. Uh, I love Darwin, but I think his problem, I don't think his problem is finishing, but I think it's composure. Yes, maybe, maybe. Instinctively, he can do some great stuff. His work rate is infectious. His attitude is brilliant. But yes, you're right. A bit of composure. A little half second. Um, Because that's it. That's all he's missing. If Darwin can add that little sprinkling of fairy dust to his finishing, what a player. Like, he is a a machine. So yes, if he can... Composure is a good word. I like what you've said there. I understand it, but they have to see it from Jurgen's point of view. So, yes, I hear you as well. I like that Jurgen was honest. I like that Jurgen looked inwardly and knew he just hadn't got the energy levels needed to give what he needs to give to the job. It's not an easy thing for a, a man or woman to do, you know, to look at your own deficiencies and be honest with yourself about those deficiencies. So, yes, that's to be commended. Um, but I still feel the point stands. You know, you're bringing in players. And look, I don't know what Soboslai was told when he was joining. I don't know what Gravenberg was told when he was joining or McAllister. I don't know if they came because <clears throat> it's Liverpool Football Club. You know, it's a step forward in the career. Or if it was Jurgen Klopp or if it was a combination of both. Uh, 824 likes by the way if you haven't please do drop a like it would be lovely to hit a thousand um, and again we're 18 subscribers away from 255,500 so thank you for that uh, we would have been top today as Arsenal drop points I know Marvin mate it hasn't escaped me It's um, but I don't know how I feel about that I, I said it in my discord group before I went live I don't know how I feel right now Of course, I'm a bit relieved Arsenal lost, but it just makes me a bit more angry that we could have been sitting here right now doing this stream, talking about six games from victory and nothing anybody can do about it. The goal difference out the window. You know, we would have had that three-point gap over Arsenal and I I can feel comfortable in saying this. I think if we had a three-point gap over Arsenal, we don't lose a game in the last six. I feel like we would have at least got five wins and a draw. Whether that was enough to get past City or not, fair enough, I don't know. But uh, Since Alonso said he's staying, we've been poor, said Matthew Walls. I see it as a second chance, said Adamus. Would I have taken a draw? I mean, of course you take anything that moves you a point closer. Because a draw would have meant a City draw and we could go and win it. Let's say now City drew... They still have a better goal difference than us. Now, it's not insurmountable. But a draw today would have left us in a bit of a better position, yes. Because now you're only one point behind City. They draw, you win, you're back on top. If we lost the league title on goal difference, oh my God. Yeah, that would be tough. Is there a split in our camp? Unsure, Jason. Something feels like it's going on, mate, behind the scenes. Something feels like... It isn't right at the minute. Um, I don't know if it's fear. and I struggle to believe it is fear because it's not like this is the first time. Like if this was us going for our first Premier League title and the weight of 
30 years of hurt on their shoulders. I'm not saying they've understood it, but it would explain the rabbit in the headlights that we've seen today, but I don't understand how we have fallen away like we have this week. I just don't get it. Um, thank you for that super sticker, number one, mate. Appreciate you. Um, Rubza Gadiri Tavi. Excuse me if I've mispronounced, which I'm sure I probably have, dude. But thank you. Don't have the squad depth. I think we do, Patrick. Respectfully, mate, I think we do. Again, look, look at that bench today. You know? We had the players we had on the pitch... And we still had Gomez, Soboslai, Gakpo, Elliot, Jota, Gravenberg, Trent and Kwanzaa on the bench. And that's without uh, Bajcecic coming back or Thiago, Matip who've been out. I think the squad depth was there. I think Jurgen continues to play favourites though. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing as well. I'm not trying to use it as a stick to beat him with. But Elliot should have been on that pitch today. At the very early, at the very latest, at the hour mark, um, there were just changes today that I thought he left too late again, and I feel I feel really horrible talking about a manager having belief in players that aren't delivering for him because you want your manager to have belief in them, but we need to change something. We need to change something and get a more positive. I think there's a comment that really has stuck with me today that the lads posted into our Discord earlier on during the watch-along. Um, let me read it out to you and see if you agree or not. It was a comment from Ian Doyle during the game and he said, somebody in the audio, or in the crowd was saying, this is an effing joke, Jürgen, comes to show from one of the fans near the press box. But the last sentence is the one that struck a chord with me. It said, We're probably only two more home games under Jürgen to come. Liverpool need to start enjoying themselves again. And I, I think Ian's right there. We do. We need to play like there isn't a weight of expectation. We need to play like everything's working. Easy said, easier said than done, I know. But it's a good comment. We need to play like we're enjoying ourselves. We need to play like we believe stuff's going to come off. We need to play like if we do the right things, it will happen. I think it's a very good comment. Uh, Ghostface said, I don't get why Diaz got subbed off, nor do I, sir. Uh, I said it during the watch along. I say it again now. I agree. I honestly miss Mane and Firmino, said LLJ. I mean, look, those front three were great, but I think, again... We've seen the best days of them, so probably the right time when they moved on. Do you think it's time to stop worrying about bringing players back too early and just play the best team we can? I don't, I don't feel like we did bring players back too early, though. You know, all these players, I feel like, have had as long as they were expected to have to recover. Um... Faint attack or faint attacks, excuse me. Thank you for your super chat. Said, feel like the pressure from the loss to Atlanta left a heavy feeling on the team. Just cannot keep conceding goals so early and adding extra pressure. I, I cannot disagree with that, mate. You know, conceding those early goals, even today again. I, the chat is sometimes a little bit ahead of me. And when I seen people going 1 0, 1 0, 1 0, again, 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 I thought this has to be a wind up. There's no way that we've gone and conceded first again at home. And sure enough, I see uh, as I put the ball into the back of the net and just disbelief at the space that he had. Nobody within five yards of him. Criminal. It just is criminal. Uh, always play your strongest team, said Stan. So, <coughs> one thing, Stan, that a lot of Liverpool fans have said that I agree with over the past week is what Jürgen tends to do differently to other managers is not go out there and try and win the game in the first hour and then take your best players off. So as you've said, start your best 11, go out there, blow them away in the first hour and then get five of them off and make changes and see out the game. That's what Arsenal have been able to do at times this season. This is what Manchester City have done 
And I agree. I'd like to see us do it rather than trying to tinker, make changes, and then look to have to try and get a Hail Mary from the bench. Uh, I'd like it the other way, exactly as you've said. Win the games, then make the changes. And then you get to rest the players, but you keep the confidence up. And um, slow starts this season have been so, so poor for us. So poor. So many times. I'm going to say it again. 21 times this season. 21 we've conceded the first goal. Uh, we're all trying to figure out what has changed. Some interesting stats. Since Mo returned from his injury, uh, the team's record is four wins, three losses, and two draws. I'm not pointing fingers, just sharing notable statistics. I remember something, RPA, that stuck in my head that Gary Neville said while Salah was at the AFCON. He said Liverpool owe Mohamed Salah to stay in the title race till he comes back from the AFCON. And I'm not saying he was right or wrong in what he said, but they did their part. We were in a title race till he came back from the AFCON. And um, I'm, I, like our friend here, I'm not pointing fingers to say who's responsible for for what we're doing, but there is something to be said about players who were in form keeping their jersey rather than just immediately hand them back over to players to come back in, regardless of whether they're in form or not. You know, Salah hasn't been in form. Whether it's fatigue, whether it's the injury carrying on or whatever, I don't know. But he hasn't been and Klopp still just wants to keep playing him. Uh, nobody's pointing to this, but what's up with the Kwanzaa Kanade rotation? Why did Ibu didn't, Ibu didn't start against United but started today after Atlanta? Don't know. Don't know. Uh, I have no problems with Kwanzaa making a mistake against Manchester United. It's a mistake. It happens. It'll happen again to other people. You know, that's life. He's a young centre-back. He'll move on. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Lots of chopping and changing. And I'm still trying to figure out why we went as strong as we did against Sparta. Uh, that 5-1 win, or 5-1 up after the first leg and playing as strong a team as we did baffles me. Uh, Craig, please bring back the FC24 career mode. Do it during the international breaks. When viewership goes down so it doesn't distract. Uh, leave it with me, Harry. A lot of people have asked me to do some more FIFA streams. And maybe I'll look at doing something in the summer. But leave it with me. Uh, you've got 1k likes already. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Um, let's have a look at the poll. It said, should we change captain? And heading for 3,000 votes. And it's tight, this one. But it is still in favour of a change of captain. And I am certainly of the mindset that we should change captain. I'm not of the mindset that we should drop Virgil van Dijk. No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying I think that the burden of the captaincy isn't sitting well. And I don't think he's a leader in that regard. So for me, I would take the captain's armband off Virgil at the end of the season. Um, but I'm not saying his career at Liverpool is finished. But that part, I, I just I feel it would be the right thing. Uh, it really is too bad we've been so good at times this season bringing in somebody like Endo over actual big names is what killed us FSG better replace I don't know why you're calling him a Chinaman when he's from Japan first and foremost mate um, and also he's a proper player and it's not Endo's fault that what we've done this season Endo's played his part I agree with you on our owners being miserable feckers. Um, they need to spend more money. And realise that you don't always have to go for the cheap out option. Yes, I'm fully with you in that regard. But I'm not happy with that comment, Jefferson, mate. I'm, I'm not. It's It stinks to me, mate. I'm being honest with you. I find it very disrespectful to... Uh, yeah, sorry, man. I had to time you out. Cause that, that's not a comment I can stand over. I find it fairly... I don't want to accuse anyone of racism, but it, it's right there, mate. Uh, I can take losses at home normally as I watch my local team, St. Johnson, get battered every week. But this week has felt different because it means so much. I hear you, Finley. Uh, yeah, I agree with people in the chat saying it was a racist comment. I agree. I do. I, I don't. I didn't think there was any need for it at all. Um so yeah I agree with you all um, and I've changed that to a ban
because I don't think a timeout was sufficient. Um, so yes, I've changed that to a ban because intentional or not, it's not acceptable. Uh, I'm delighted with Endo instead of Lavi and Caicedo. I wouldn't swap Endo for Caicedo. Look, I would swap Endo for Caicedo because I think Caicedo's a different player with us. But I'm not saying Endo hasn't done a great job. Endo has been brilliant. Endo has very much served his team well this year and helped us. But, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence with us that if the first option doesn't work out, the next option is usually the cheap option. So I get where everybody's coming from in that regard with uh, with our owners. And it didn't go unnoticed to me that one of the attributes that those looking for the next Liverpool manager were looking for was somebody who outperforms their budget. Um, somebody who outperforms the f- expectation of, of what they've been given. Look at what Amram's done at Sporting Lisbon, you know, beating the financial might of Porto and Benfica. So in some ways, that's a good thing that he overachieves. But in another way, with the owners that we have, part of me is thinking, no problem with anybody overachieving, but I'd like them to overachieve at the top level, like give them proper money and let them overachieve or let a player that's 60 million look like a 100 million pound player. But going for an 18 and a half million quid one does feel a bit, uh, a bit cheap. Uh, Eve, thank you for your super chat. Said, why are you making the same mistakes? Klopp, the players both can't kill games, can't start well, can't score first. We rely on flukes, same mistakes. You're not wrong about the same thing over and over again, Eve. Um, or Evie. I can't believe we started that game as slowly as we did again today. I can't believe it's happened so often this season. And I think we need to know why. Uh, Laser Sharps just said, why, why, why? I don't know, mate. Dude, I don't know. But thank you for your very kind super chat and your support of the channel, dude. But I, I don't know, mate. I don't know what the hell is going on at the minute. I know I should be feeling a bit happier than I did earlier on this afternoon, but if anything, I feel like my frustrations only increased because, as I keep saying, we could be sitting here now top of the league. Um, and we're not. We finished the day third. But... At least Arsenal didn't improve their position on us. Uh, Craig, I think I would sell Salah and if a good offer comes in for Lucho, like 70 million, I would take it, bringing the Nashia from Sporting. So I have no problem with the players, Abdullah, that you'd like to bring in. And I'm not saying that you said this, bro, but I don't like the idea of us having to sell players to buy players. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, selling one or two, but... There should be a big budget there anyway for the next manager. So I would hope that with the return of Champions League football, with the increased footfall inside Anfield, with the Annie Road End extension done, that there should be more money available. And yes, supplementing that with some sales is never a bad thing, but I hope there's a decent budget there at first, regardless of what happens with sales. Uh, we need to move past just chaos. Arsenal and City are so good because they control games. Yes, we said this earlier on. Um, we were talking about finishing games off early, scoring a couple of goals, shutting up shop and seeing out the game. That that has been what Arsenal and City have been capable of this year. And in the past, we have. This season, you're right, it's been chaos. It's been lay heroics. It's been getting away with it. Um, and look, a lot of people have rightly pointed out, say maybe these results were coming. Maybe we've been getting away with it. But it doesn't hurt, make it hurt any less though, does it? Uh, Video Brian, thank you, mate, for upgrading your membership. You're very kind. Appreciate your support to the channel, mate. Uh, we need to remember City isn't the same team. Absolutely. I would agree with that as well. Look, all today has done, I guess, is shifted the title favour to Manchester City. Uh, chances missed by us and Arsenal, absolutely. It, City are the big winners this weekend. They've improved their goal difference. They rested Rodri. Um, but you never know. We don't know what the Champions League will take out of them in the run-in. 
you know, they've got to go to Brighton in the league away next. Depending on which Brighton shows up, that could be a difficult. The problem I have with it, and I'm going to be honest with you, I feel like De Zerbi has a bit of a a crush on Guardiola, a bit of a man crush. And I, I feel like he'll roll over that with the team. Um, but I hope I'm wrong. Still have a chance City will not win all their games, said Nui Osmani. Uh, Craig Spurs are City's biggest nightmare. Oh, mate, I'm not counting out the possibility of Spurs doing something. You know, Spurs, ironically, could still have a big part to play in this title race because they play all three of us. They play Arsenal in the North London Derby. They come to Anfield for us and City have to go to Spurs gaff. So, yes, you are right. And they have caused City problems before. So do you guys want me to carry on for another while or do you want me to call it a night? I'm uh, I'm easy to do whatever you guys want. If you want to continue to chat, we chat. If you want to continue to, you know, trying to figure this all out, happy to do it. If you want me to head off for the night, happy to do that as well. What would you change for Thursday? Would you start Elliot from now on? Stay on. Cool. Thank you. Well, no problem. We'll stay on. What would I change for Thursday? Something. You can't do the same thing again and expect a different result. So let me pitch you a scenario for Thursday. You start the game with Allison, Gomez, um, Van Dijk, Kwanzaa, Robertson, Endo, McAllister, Elliot, Diaz on the right wing, Jota in the middle and Gakpo on the left. You start the game with that. And then if you get a goal up, imagine Liverpool 1-0 up away in Atlanta, 50 minutes on the clock, Klopp makes a change, Darwin comes off the bench, Salah comes off the bench, Jones maybe comes off the bench. I feel like we can do it that way when they're tiring unleash players and say, Darwin, give me 30 minutes. Salah, give me 30 minutes of everything you have. Go out there, be free, play with freedom, cause them problems, run at them, shoot, take chances, create moments of chaos. With Atlanta's legs tiring, that's what I would do. Not start with the Salah Darwin stuff that we've seen over and over again. Make a change. Give the people a chance to have an impact and see what happens. That's what I'd do on Thursday. Um, and I hope Jürgen rings the changes because he needs to do something. Uh, but I think we only win the cup this season. This wasn't for winning the Prem. Nobody expected us to be in a title race. Yeah, look, you're right. I didn't expect at the start of it that we'd be sitting here talking about a title race, but we are in a title race and... Dropping five points in our last two league games is unacceptable at any point, whether you're in a title race or not. To have had one point out of our last six points available in the Premier League at the business end of a season, when Klopp's departing, it's not a great look. Uh, you reckon Klopp's watching this? I would say he probably doesn't want to look at any football for a while. I'd say he's probably at home with his family. Or gone out for a walk with his dog or something. I mean, yeah, I don't think he wants to get his head buried in fan opinion at the minute because his head's probably already melted. What are your thoughts on Liverpool doing a parade at the end of the season? I'd be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed as well, Katie. I understand the sentiment of it. I understand the big send-off for Jürgen. But it would feel a little bit... Tin pot having a parade to parade the Carabao Cup. I would rather we give Jürgen a huge send-off inside Anfield. Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of a parade with, with a, a League Cup. I, I get that it's to celebrate everything Jürgen has done. And I guess, in some senses, give the city a chance to say goodbye to him. I, I understand that. Just a par like I'd rather it's an event in a park you know, uh, a stage in a park where a hundred thousand fans could go and gather, something like that, rather than a parade. It's just the word parade just doesn't feel right in this moment. What 
what would you say if Klopp was watching? Um, what would I say if Jurgen was watching? Well, firstly, I'd say thank you for everything you've given to Liverpool, to us fans, to making us believe and to giving us the confidence to dream about winning league titles. Um, I would say that it broke my heart seeing them so dejected after the game today, looking so confused. Um, and I would say that I wish him nothing but the best in the rest of his life. And he's given me the best years as a, an adult supporting this football club. And he's been an, an amazingly inspirational man to a lot of us. And um, yeah, just thank you really is what I would say. Nothing's going to taint Jurgen's legacy at the club. For me, nothing. There'll never be a day where I say, Jurgen out. Not at all. It's on his terms. It should always have been on his terms. I'm sad that he's not staying to see out his contract. I can't lie about that. But I understand his thought process. I understand that he doesn't feel that he can give the energy levels that the job needs. As I said at the start of the stream... It takes a big person to look inwardly and see that deficiency in yourself and be honest about it. So I respect the man for that. Um, yeah. I'd also say, please don't be starting Salad and Darwin on Thursday. Please make some changes and give somebody a chance to prove to, to prove that they're they have what it takes. Uh, my dad's just said Pep's playing style is what Liverpool were doing when he watched them as a kid. He wanted me to send you this message. I totally get it, Star Girl. You know, I do totally understand where your dad's coming from. Those Liverpool teams of the 70s, 80s, they played teams to death. They wore them down. They beat them psychologically. They beat them physically. And they ground out win after win. I totally understand and appreciate where your dad's coming from. Uh, Jürgen made the club again. Yes. And... More so than just the football stuff. It's been very inspirational to look at a good human being at the, the helm of the football club. To look at somebody who spoke truths that needed to be spoken around the time of COVID. Um, and always looked at the bigger picture and always looked for humanity first. It's one of the things that, as much as people don't think I like the man, it's one of the things that inspire me about Mohamed Salah to see him bring people together to see him look out for humanity like he did when he made his posts um about aid and humanitarian assistance getting into people they're good people they're good men and i know people think i don't like salah but i promise you nothing further from the truth i love the man i think he's a great human being I just feel like his best days are behind him. And I feel like if I didn't say that, I'd be disingenuous to people who I would hope believe that I'm truthful when I speak to them. But he's an incredible human being, an incredible father by the looks of it, and a, a legend at our football club. But same with Jurgen. I look at him and I just think, you've done more than be a manager. You've been a good influence. You've been a good leader, a role model, at a time when there's a lot lacking in the world from role models and to have somebody like Jurgen at the helm of the football club yeah, it's it's been it's been nourishing is probably the word uh Craig thanks for tonight it's therapy sesh mate uh thank you Barry for all of your support mate you and Brian have been incredibly generous to myself and of course to our community uh Gakpo left Diaz right maybe Mo in the middle if Jota can start they're slow at the back but we couldn't exploit it enough trying to carve these open uh, Craig, do you think we are playing too passive at the minute? 100% yes. Passive is a word that I would describe today with. From the start, you know, we didn't get stuck into them. We should have let Crystal Palace know in five minutes that this is going to be a long 90 minutes for them. That nothing is coming cheap. That every ball will be 4-4. Four, four. Argue over everything. Coin toss, throw-ins, everything. They should have been dreading walking out on that pitch. And after five minutes, they should have wanted to go and hide. But we didn't do that. So yes, passive. Far too passive. 
do I think Liverpool can win the treble? <laughs> I wouldn't be putting any money on it. But as Connor said to me earlier on, it'd be the most Liverpool thing in the world to go and turn it around on Thursday against Atalanta. Um, so let's see what Thursday brings. Uh, Chelsea fan, don't give up yet. I hate mid-table. I don't blame you, mate. I'd say you're very frustrated with uh, with a lot of stuff going on at the club. Um, but thank you for your super chat, mate. It's... Oh, it feels like a really wasted opportunity today because seeing Arsenal lose to, to Villa, just knowing we could be sitting here now top of the Premier League just sucks. Uh, I fully agree, but I think his farewell could be affecting some players. I think that's understandable. Um, oh, that's that's the... That's the poll I wanted to finish up with for the last 15 minutes. Let me just throw this up. One sec. Right, so last poll before we finish up. Was it the wrong decision for Klopp to announce his departure? I'd really love to know because this has been a major talking point on lots of fan forums that I've been reading on The Athletic and The Echo uh, after the game. Lots of people talking about the timing of the announcement. It all felt a bit rushed, like they were trying to get out ahead of the media, like something was going to leak. So... I know in hindsight it's easy for us to look back and be critical now, but we did get a bounce from it. Whether that bounce was too early and has draw has uh, fatigued the guys mentally, maybe. But uh, yeah, let's see what that poll says anyway. Uh, Moar said this one's fifty fifty for me. Uh, John Brady said we're not bothered. Uh, who needs to step up big time in your opinion to turn this season around? Darwin, Salah, Verge. Yeah, those three could be a, a decisive factor. Defensively, we need to keep clean sheets. That needs to be the base at this point. Keep a clean sheet. Don't do anything from that. If Liverpool lose the title, they should sue the PGMOL. It's not their fault that we've... Uh... Look, we've had moments that, yes, they've certainly made the wrong decisions on. But we've also had chances to go on there and win this league title anyway. If we didn't drop five points in the last week, we're sitting here now on top of the league. How do you scout for a replacement manager without drawing attention to yourself? Don't know the answer. Yeah, don't know the answer to that question. It's a valid question as well. You know, to do this search, yes, you probably want to have that freedom of knowing that you can court these managers, talk to their agents. I, I hear where you're coming from and it's a valid point. Uh, Craig, I think the problem is Jürgen announces departure at the final day or later. It will create a massive black hole of confusion. Possibly troubles the players mentally next campaign. Yeah. Look, I didn't set this poll to say I'm right or wrong. Or, or I don't know how I feel about it. That's my honest answer. I'm, I'm torn on whether I think it was a good thing or a bad thing. I really don't know. Because, as I said, we did get a bounce from it. We did get the whole mentality of the players saying, let's do it for the gaffer. So, yeah. There's, de there's definitely been a positive outcry of emotion and uh, a response we've seen Trent in interviews given as well talk about wanting to do for the manager so there definitely has been a, an upside to the announcement if any players are letting Jurgen leave affect their performance slash desire I want them out of the club we're fighting for a league title this is Liverpool not Klopp FC said Fritz Frank uh, yes I agree I certainly would be annoyed. Like somebody said earlier on, do you think the fact that 
I think it was Barry. No, it wasn't Barry. It was Coach Bill said earlier on. Do you think the fact that Sobersly was told the club was going to be here is affecting him a bit? Is he feeling a bit moody about it? Like Fritz Frank has said there, if if that is the case, well, you need to man up and be a professional and still give 100% for those people that are paying for their season tickets or paying for their TV subscriptions or paying his wages. So, yes, I've no time for players not giving 100%. We've scored nine goals in the last six games out of 149 shots. And in his Liverpool career, Nunes has missed 40 big chances. 40 plus big chances, said Ashley Dooley. Ashley, I don't think you're going to find anyone in the chat, mate, who argues that Darwin has missed a lot of chances. Um, I think we'll all agree with you on that. It's, you know, today, I looked at the stats for today's game. We had... Let me get them back again, actually. I think we had something like 20-something shots with five on target or something. And they had nine with six or something stupid like that. We've been so wasteful. If there was an award for the team with the most shots blocked in a season, I think we'd win it. When do you think Pep will leave City? I think he'll leave in a year. I don't know if the outcome of the investigation will change either way, but my mindset would be I think Pep leaves in a year. You know, if he wins two back-to-back trebles and it makes me so dirty saying that, you know, what else? I don't know. What else? Does he feel motivated to stay there anymore? What else can he prove? Um, I don't know. When the charges come, said Raccoon. Any news regarding Amorim? Nothing new, David. No, nothing new, mate. Other than Sporting are closing in on the league title in Portugal. They're uh, seven clear now, so looks like they're going to um get over the line anyway. I think Pep leaves in two years. Is his contract not up in a year or have I got that completely wrong? The reason I said one year is I thought Pep's contract ended in one year. Um, I know there was talk of him signing an extension, but I can't remember if he did or not. Gomez's best position is left back. Thoughts? Hmm... Maybe. Maybe. I don't like him as a centre-back because I feel he ball-watches too much and I feel like people can drift in behind them. So, full-back positions, left side. I mean, yes and no. I think he can do good work on the right side as well. But I do think uh, he's better as a full-back than a centre-back. Uh, City not getting charged, football's corrupt. They've already been charged. The charges are there. Now is their hearing or appeal against the charges. Uh, Craig, do you think even if City get financial implications and possibly title strips, would it even matter? I think it would matter for the... for the game. It would matter for the, you know, morals. It would matter for what's right and wrong. I don't want, like, if they get stripped of their titles, I don't want Liverpool to get any of them. I would rather there was just a big exclamation mark beside those years where it said nobody won the league title this year because. Uh, Pep will stop once he doesn't win the league in the Champions League, which looks like he'll be there forever, sadly. Do you think Liverpool should change their lineup and play style? Um, yes and yes. Chimicus out. Oh, look, I'd sell Costas. I said that all season, mate. I've never been a... I think Costas has been okay, but I've never been a big fan of uh, of what he does. Look, guys, I, I really appreciate you all coming and joining me again. It's been lovely to, to chat to you and, I guess, process some of the stuff that has happened today. Uh, 
The last poll is, was it the wrong decision for Klopp to announce his departure? 60% of you guys, or 59% now, say yes. 41% say no. Um, I'm going to go grab me a shower and uh, just unwind for a while. I will see you tomorrow at half past eight for Late Night Agenda, as always. I'll be seeing you on a Monday. Um, thank you all so much for coming on again tonight and having a chat with me and you know helping us try to figure out what the hell's going on and what to expect. Uh, wish you and your families nothing but love and happiness. Thank you for coming and joining me, and I'll catch up with you guys later.